liver it is the second largest organ and uh, the largest gland in the human body it weighs about 1.4 kg in adults and the liver is divided into two lobes right lobe and the left lobe by a ligament called falciform ligament and some people say anatomically right side is again divided into two lobes caudate lobe and a quadrate lobe and this liver hangs from the right side below the diaphragm and liver is made up of several lobes each lobe is divided into several lobules and each lobule is covered by a connective tissue called glycerol capsule hepatic portal vein and hepatic artery supply the blood to the liver whereas hepatic vein it collect the blood from the liver let us see the development of liver and pancreas in embryonic stage liver arises as a hepatic diverticulum which contains several small cards and gall bladder arises as a small outgrowth a pear shaped structure on the other side a dorsal pancreatic bud arises later the pancreatic bud it grows into pancreas whereas this gall bladder it becomes pear shaped and this pancreas and liver duct together they join to form a hepatopancreatic duct finally if you see the structure of this one these are common hepatic duct it joins with the cystic duct and then finally combined with the duct of virsin to form an ampulla this ampulla is called ampulla of water and it opens near the duodenum and uh, pancreas also contain another small duct called santorini duct liver it is the largest gland in our body it is present towards the right side in the abdominal cavity and it is suspended from the diaphragm by a falciform ligament and apart from this there is a round ligament from its inner border and the two lobes are separated with the help of right and left coronary ligaments towards anterior and upper surface gall bladder it is about 7 to 10 cm long present in the anterior and right side of the liver lobes gall bladder is structurally similar to stomach and uh, it has a body and also neck hepatic ducts they start from the liver lobes and they carry the bile there are a pair of hepatic ducts right and left they join together to form a common hepatic duct this common hepatic duct join with the cystic duct of gall bladder to form a common bile duct so pancreas is the second largest gland and uh, the pancreatic juice is carried by two ducts a main pancreatic duct is called duct of virsin and accessory duct is called santorini duct santorini duct opens directly into the duodenum whereas duct of virsin combined with common bile duct and it forms hepatopancreatic ampulla and the opening of this ampulla is guarded by sphincter of body it regulate the flow of bile and pancreatic juice into the duodenum the definition of portal system is vein starts as a capillaries in one organ and join to form a big vein and uh, split into again capillaries in another organ in this case it starts as a capillary in the intestine form a hepatic portal vein and after entering into the liver it gives profuse capillaries hepatic portal system in this blood is collected from the intestine which is rich in nutrients and the nutrients are deposited in the liver before they are released into the circulation so hepatic portal system includes linogastric vein that collect blood from the stomach and intestine rich in nutrients and anterior mesenteric vein that collect nutrient rich blood from the small intestine that is duodenum jejunum and ileum whereas posterior mesenteric vein collects blood from the large intestine which is rich in drugs and water and all these veins join together to form a hepatic portal vein which ends in the liver and gives a large number of capillaries so that is why it is called portal system function of hepatic portal system is to collect the nutrients water 
and other substances after digestion from the intestine and convert them into proteins, lipids and glycogen in the liver. Remaining nutrients are allowed to flow in the circulation towards heart. Then heart after oxygenating the blood supply these nutrients to all parts of the body through systemic artery. So let us see the pathway. So the nutrient rich blood from hepatic portal vein and oxygenated blood from the hepatic artery they enter into the liver sinusoids. From there they will reach the central vein and from the central vein all central veins are joined to form hepatic vein is ultimately open into inferior vena cava then inferior vena cava pour the blood into the right atrium of the heart. Histology of liver As we have already studied that the liver is made up of lobes. Each lobe is made up of lobules. A lobule is roughly polygonal or hexagonal in which the hepatocytes they are arranged in form of rows. They are called hepatic cards and they are present on a basement membrane which is made up of reticular connective tissue and this total elite is covered by a thin connective tissue that connective tissue is called glissens capsule. So in man glissens capsule is not continuous. It is an incomplete covering around each lobule. Then if you see the each lobule let us see what is a portal blood supply to the liver lobule. So margins of the glisten capsules, they contain portal triad. A portal triad is made up of a hepatic artery, hepatic portal veins and also hepatic veins. So these are three things together called hepatic portal triad or simply portal triad. When blood passes from hepatic artery and hepatic portal vein, it pass like a tributary of river and then join in the center. This is called central sinus. So the nutrient rich fluid from the hepatic portal vein and the oxygen rich blood from the hepatic artery. These two they bring oxygen and nutrients to liver cells. As you have seen in this diagram, as this blood flows in one direction, nutrients are absorbed by the hepatocytes and they can convert the glucose into glycogen, amino acids into proteins and then uh, triglycerides into required cholesterol and fat. And scattered in between the hepatic cards, there are some reticuloendothelial cells, these are called Kupfer cells. These Kupfer cells, they mainly identify the old RBCs and they break the old RBCs and they separate hemoglobin. and globin that is how bile is formed. To summarize this, a liver is made up of lobes, right lobe and left lobe broadly and it is separated by a small ligament, falciform ligament. Each liver lobe is made up of several lobules. A lobule is covered by a glissens capsule and uh, hepatocytes are arranged in rows. In the margins of this lobule, blood vessel portal triad which is made up of hepatic artery, then hepatic portal vein and bile ducts. These three together called portal triad. They supply blood and whereas bile duct they will collect the bile. So bile is passed through small canaliculi. These are called bile canaliculi. So the flow of blood is in one direction and flow of bile is in opposite direction. Functions of the liver. Liver it is mainly involved in synthesis and interconversion of food and uh, they can store the food and also they help in secretion. It converts the glucose into glycogen. This process is called glycogenesis. Glycogenolysis. When a person is under starvation, this glycogen is converted into glucose. This process is called glycogenolysis. Then gluconeogenesis. Sometimes the excess of proteins are amino acids and the excess of fats are fatty acids. They are converted into glucose. Then it also converts triglycerides into required fats that is called lipogenesis. And excess of proteins, they are anyway digested into amino acids. 
So amino acid contain an alkyl radical, hydrogen group and carboxylic acid and amino group. Removal of amino group is called deamination. Deaminated amino acids can be converted into glucose. This is called gluconeogenesis. Whereas the deaminated amino groups combined with carbon dioxide, then it forms urea. So, liver is the site of synthesis of urea. And ornithine arginine cycle, it helps in the formation of urea. And uh, during muscle contraction, that uh, lactic acid formed in the muscles is transported to the liver. Inside the liver, it is converted into glycogen. This process is called Cori cycle. Let us summarize the functioning of the liver. So, hepatic portal vein, it brings nutrients, drugs, foreign particles and bile salts. Whereas, blood in the hepatic artery is rich in bile rubin, metabolites of the hormones and nutrients. These are all brought to the liver. Inside the liver, as we have already seen, glucose and fat metabolism. Then protein synthesis, hormone synthesis, urea production and detoxification that excess of nutrients are stored in the liver. So these are all main functions of the liver. Whereas after breakdown of old RPCs, certain metabolites are synthesized by the liver cells. They are together called bile. Bile includes bile salts, bile rubin, water and ions, some amount of phospholipids. Whereas blood is collected by a hepatic vein and this hepatic vein it carries the blood away from the liver towards the heart. It opens into the post cable vein. That blood is rich in glucose, some plasma proteins, albumins and clotting factors, angiotensinogen, urea, vitamin D and somatomedins and metabolites for excretion. So they are all carried towards the heart through the blood.